Round there. Then a straight line here. Yes, that looks better. Round there. Then a straight line here. Yes, that looks better. many folk are scurrying about. A trader? I suppose you could say that. A trader of sorts. Just take a look at all those shiny things coming in the markets. Sad day when my legs stopped working quite so well. Haven't made it down to the lower level in some time. Say, I heard from some other folks that you're one of the most helpful people in Eastshade. Do you have time to help an old woman? Excellent, excellent. You and I, young friend. I can tell we're gonna make a fine pair. a long time since I had a partner of any sort. Oh, I feel ten years younger. I'm embarrassed to admit. I left a precious box up north in the caverns. You know, the howling caverns on the Teeth Moor Bluffs? I must have left it there. It was years ago, mind you, that I left it behind. Longer, actually. I was still a young girl. Spent time playing all over Eastshade. That box was one of my favorite possessions, passed down from my mother. I must have spent hours searching those caverns. Dunno if the sea swept it out or if someone came and took it. Suppose I became a touch more sentimental in my later years. I just want to see it again. It has some decoration, you know. Not too much. It's a rather simple wooden box, I think. I'm rooting for you, child. Living vicariously through you in your quest to retrieve my lost box. Sorry, you can't go up there right now. We're doing some renovations. <sighs> Hard to say. Maybe in ten months, give or take? Could be longer if we hit any delays. Well, you need a pass. Any official from the university should be able to give you one.
Have a good one. Good to see a new face. Let me know if I can help you with anything. I'm not supposed to give those out to patrons. There's a bit of construction going on. Well, that sounds lovely. Why don't you talk to Zora about this? She has an office on the next floor up, and probably a bit more clearance to fudge the rules. Hi there. Hi there. I'm in the middle of something at the moment. You made it to Nava! You still have the pastries, right? Oh, this is gonna be great! Okay, my brother's sitting at the table right outside the bakery. I'll go over to him first, then you follow behind. Remember, make him think you're a normal delivery person. Expecting a delivery. Give it here. Hmm. It looks like someone's rifled Trudy's. They're a little crushed, too. A little crushing isn't gonna ruin the tangy, sublime, gorgeous taste of raspberries. Ugh. What? What's happening to me? This is this is the most revolting, sickening. This flavor. Grape! My tongue! It'll never be the same! What despicable baker would make an error so unforgivable? Ugh. Neo! This my brother's idea of a prank? Poisoning a person's taste buds with the most repulsive flavor ever invented? That's just... it's... 
Hilarious. I can't believe you actually got me. And Neo's always trying to do these ridiculous pranks. Usually I can see him from a mile away. But messing around with great pastries? That's some risky business. You should be proud. I'm not easily pranked. That was perfect. I couldn't picture it going any better. He totally thought you were a delivery person. <laughs> this one will go down in family history. You should look into doing this for a living. I don't have much to give you, but seeing my brother eat a great pastry was just priceless. Welcome to the inn below the tarnished teapot. Mm, correct. That is the name. We once had another name, but everyone just called us that inn below the tarnished teapot. I don't really blame them. This place is a bit of a dump. The manager has really let it go. Me. It's cold and damp. Tiny windows. Smells a little stale. At least the front door's nice and big. That's a plus, I suppose. Sounds hard. I used to live on the mainland years ago, working as a bricklayer. Was terrible. Hated every minute. Then my grandma died, bless her soul, and left me a son. Quit my job that day and got the first ship here. For no reason in particular. Just wanted to leave. Bought this dumpy floor for dirt cheap. Didn't really know what I was doing. Now this city's a boom town, and I'm living off the reverse mortgage. Just goes to show, act impulsively, and sometimes you get rich. That's what I've learned anyway. Oh, and have some inheritance. You sure? We have rats. Oh. Welcome to the inn below the tarnished teapot. You sure? We have rats. If you really want, first door on your left.
case. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Zara, assistant research scientist here at the university. Do you know of Melek? He's the merchant selling the so-called elixir of life down in the market. I have a favor to ask of you. Do you think you could perhaps go to Melek's shop in the market and buy me one of said elixirs? I'll buy it from you at twice what it's worth. Well, you see, I've earned a bit of a reputation here in Nava as the resident skeptic. I just like to know the science of things. I tried to buy one from him. He told me that with my closed-minded attitude, it would never work on me, and refused to sell me one. The obvious tactic of a charlatan, if you ask me. Fantastic! You can find me here just about any time. I'm always working. <sighs> Welcome, friend. Would you like a guaranteed long and healthy life? My elixir will fortify you with the strength and vigor. Imagine a longer life for you and your loved ones, sourced from hot springs around the island. This water is guaranteed to give you an extra 20 years, at least. Some of my longtime customers are practically living history books. They've been drinking the elixir for years, and not a day have they aged. Of course, just look at all these happy people. They love it, and it works perfectly for them. Each of my customers is a testament to the strength of this powerful elixir. So, what do you say? The water is sourced from the life-giving springs of East Shade. Ah, you returned! You will certainly live a long time if you keep drinking this magical tincture. Would you like to purchase some? Ah, yes. Sadly, there are people around here who don't appreciate the happiness and longevity given by the precious elixir. Really, we must pity these poor people. Their lives are so empty and so very short. day for science. Did you by chance pick me up one of those elixirs from the market? Wonderful. Now I can run some tests. Why don't you come back in about an hour and I'll fill you in on my findings. I 
know it's a spectacular view. Beyond that, though, is there any reason specifically you need to be up there? I see. Well, I'll tell you what. Help me with discovering the truth about Melek's elixir, and I'll get you a pass. Welcome to Yevony's Art Gallery and Supply. And before you ask, no, I'm not Yevony. And if you came to request a commission, unfortunately we can't help with that either. Yevony is totally backed up at the moment, but we do have painting supplies in stock. Yes, but we're full as I said. Normally folks just need to write down what they want and Yevony will paint it for them. The best painter in Nava that Yevony. She's been painting her whole life and doing commissions for at least 40 years. These days, she's spending more and more of her time on personal work. Good for her, I say, but still. We can't keep up with commissions like we used to, and demand is only growing. Oh, are you a painter? We've been looking for someone to help with the workload, but so far no one's been up to Yevany's standards. Do you have a portfolio I can look at? Wow, your work is so detailed. You should show this to Yevany. She lives in the common tower. That's the big round building in the middle. You might just be the painter we need. She'll absolutely want to see at least three paintings though. Anything I can help with? Need some supplies? Let me know if you need any weird tasting ground up plants. Let me know if you need any weird tasting ground up plants. Get your news here. Get your news here. Did you pick up a paper? Would you like to donate a glowstone to the Shadian Post so we can keep the paper free without ads and unmotivated by pop news and tabloid journalism? Thank you for your contribution. Hi there. I mainly work in furniture, but by the looks of your pack, I doubt you're interested in buying a table or chair. Not to worry, though. I've got just the thing. How would you like to buy a handcrafted wooden bike? Eighty glowstones. Is it though? Just look at this bike. It's a feat of engineering. Riding it feels like flying. 
and it saves you so much time. Oh, well, if you ever do, I've got plenty in stock. They take me a good while to make, but I'm getting faster at it. Got to keep up with the demand. I brew you up. Just because I'm an owl folk doesn't mean I can't control myself around copious amounts of fresh fish. Okay, sometimes I eat some of the stock, but it's my shop after all. Good day. One thing I can say about the folks here, they never ask for swords. Which pleases me greatly, because swords are just about the most boring things you could ask a blacksmith to make. The only thing more boring than making a sword is being dead. Which, coincidentally, is what swords are used for. Which is another reason why I'm glad folks around here don't ask me to make them. I'd rather make a kettle any day of the week. Your clothes are looking a little scrappy. Bet you're just about to freeze to death come nightfall. If you're ever looking to upgrade your attire, I'm sure I have just the thing. Oh, what is it? I feel like I just ate a huge by to death. All I had today was a zucchini. I, I mean, it looked weird, but it tasted really good. Oh, this is horrible. I do love working here in the university. 
even though my senior Professor Esma can be a bit... eccentric at times. Well, I've run some tests. Unfortunately, my findings are... inconclusive. The solution seems to be mixed with so many things I can't get a clear reading of its composition. I've been thinking. Melek claims the life-giving ingredient in his potions is water from the local hot springs. I know it's a big ask, but I'm wondering if you're interested in collecting water samples from each of the five hot springs of Eastshade. Then we can really answer this question once and for all. No more tricks, no more overpriced traps. What do you say? Sadly, I don't have time to leave the university much. I've got lectures to teach, and my current research is in an entirely different area. <sighs> Fantastic! Take these empty vials. The collection should be fairly straightforward. Finding the five hot springs will be the hard part. They're in all corners of the island, and some are rather tucked away. Red? Or... Yes, just a touch of orange. Oh, hello there. Uh, I must have left the door unlocked again. Can I help you? All right, all right. Let's see what you've got. Well, these look fantastic. So much detail and what accurate depictions. You've got some skill here. I spent years honing my skill, sharing my work with the people of Nava. But these days, I'm no longer interested in realism. I love the life of flowing through abstract art. Unfortunately, there's not much interest for that style right now. I know it's hard to understand. You realists are also focused on accuracy of sight that you miss the accuracy of the heart. Anyway, I won't try to convince you. Anyway, your portfolio is exactly the kind of thing my customers love. How about this? I'm going to shut down my commissions. They've been leaving me uninspired this past year anyway. I'll pass on any new requests to you. Then I can really focus my time on these spots and blobs. Okay, I'll tell Art Dealer the situation. Our customers write down their requests in a ledger back in the gallery. Take a look through and see if there are any requests you'd like to paint. terrible. I'm not sure if we've met before, but I'll need help. Oh dear, this morning I sold some zucchinis. I thought they were zucchinis, but now I still have the zucchinis here in my basket. 
are so toxic tumours. Oh God, I've no idea who I sold them to. Numb legs, upset stomach, and then oh, hours of vomiting. Oh God, what can we do? This is a nightmare. Once was bad enough, but twice. And now people are going to start being sick. There's so little time. I need to recover those tubers. Can you help me? I've got no one else to turn to. Thank you, thank you. Please, just ask people if they bought any zucchinis today. Tell them what happened and get the tubers back. I sold four zucchinis all together and I put them in blue bags. Maybe that could help you find them. Oh God, I hope no one has eaten any. I just ate a huge bite of death. All I had today was a zucchini. I, I mean, it looked weird, but it tasted really good. Oh, great. Yeah, I bought one. I ate it already. Oh, how long is this going to last? I'm going to kill Tam. This is horrible. in the spice shop down in the lower market. She's not the best cook, though. <laughs> but she's wonderful. I mean, you know, she's a great person. So kind, funny, thoughtful. We've been spending a lot of time together lately. Things are really so great between us. I think I want to ask her if she'll be my girlfriend. I want to be some more special when I ask her, though. Some more magical and perfect. Like sitting on a golden cloud at sunset while butterflies circle around us. But you're probably not interested in this kind of thing. She loves bread. So yesterday I baked her a loaf in the shape of a rose. We ate it together on a bench in the garden. It was so perfect. Oh my god, what if I already missed the perfect moment? I'm just so nervous to ask the question. Can you... would you do me a favor? Can you find out Leilani's favorite place? I know it's kind of silly to dance around like this. I just want it to be special. the best. She works in the spice shop down in the lower market area. Let me know what you find out. Please hurry. I'm so excited.
password. And get lost. What's the password? Stay informed. Get the latest issue of the Shadian Post. Pick it up here. Free copies. Accepting donations. buy any spices, like pepper, or whatever this is. Oh yeah? She's pretty great, isn't she? We met at the bread stand where she works. I really like bread, so I'm over there a lot. I guess so. I don't get to go anywhere exciting very often. I have to travel to Lindo every week to get supplies. It's fine over there, but I wish I didn't have to go all the time. It's kind of like a creepy ghost town out there. Yeah, I mean, me and Evelina have been hanging out a lot. She's really great. Like the other day she made me a special loaf of bread in the shape of a flower. She's just so cool. There's this cool hot spring on the Salt Spring Coast. I used to go there when I was a kid. It's all the way at the end of the beach, and no one really knows about it. It's a perfect place for picnics. Yeah, you'd probably like it. Well, I should probably get back to pretending to know about spices. anything out? Oh god, did she tell you what she thinks of me? Really? <laughs> I'm dying. Tell me what she said. Where is her favorite place? Really? I'd heard about it, but I didn't think it was real. It sounds like the perfect magical place. <sighs> okay, I'm going to start making plans. Thank you so much. I'm so nervous. This is going to be amazing. Wish me luck. Hello there. Such a great day, isn't it? Last night, 
I saw two shooting stars, and right then I knew today was going to be a fine one. Ah, you're an artist? Oh, you must be very skilled. I can barely draw a straight line in the mud. <laughs> if you're feeling especially energetic, we could always use a hand in the fields. We've got a lot of work down on the pea terraces. It can be draining, but I like to read in my free time. A nice book of poetry always boosts my spirits. What? Are you serious? Okay, well, I bought some, but I definitely didn't eat them. I'd never make that kind of mistake. I, uh, I just don't have them anymore. Threw them away. <laughs> I, mm, I need to go now. Well, looky doodah, we've got a fresh face. I haven't seen you in the city before, and I like to think I know just about everyone around here. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Osha. Some people around here call me the One Glowstone Guy because I'll buy anything for One Glowstone. Any item under the sun and moon. Just one. The way I see it, I already got just about everything I needed. So nothing's worth more than one glowstone to me. There's only one thing that's worth more than a glowstone to me. One special thing. And that thing is... Mountain water. I'll give you two for that. Did I mention some people call me One Glowstone Guy? Well, I've got two nicknames around here. The other thing people call me is 500 Glowstone Guy. I only ever have one item for sale at a time, and I only sell anything for one price. Guess how much? 500 glowstones. Sealant. Would you like to buy some sealant? It'll be 500 glowstones. There's only one thing I want that I can't seem to get. But I'm not sure you can help. I want to get into that fancy club, The Roots. They're such exclusive little buggers. I need the password to get in. No idea who to talk to about that. Get me that password, and I'll give you the sealant. Would you like to buy some sealant? It'll be 500 glowstones. You think so? Would you like to buy some sealant? It'll be 500 glowstones. You think so? Well, I only have one thing to say to that. Would you like to buy some sealant? It'll be 500 glowstones. Hmm. There's only one thing I want that I, I will get. Howdy.
I can still taste that grape filling. Repulsive. I'm never gonna forget the look on his face when he ate that grape filled pastry! <laughs> Hi there. Just one of the many cultural pastimes of Nava. They're usually pretty secretive though. You might have seen some signs plastered around demanding you report the roots. Fine. Everyone's got their own opinions. Just don't report them to me. There's nothing illegal about their organization. It's all just a really long feud. It tore my dad's family apart, I guess. But you should just talk to the Shez directly. They're the ones looking for information. They've been covering the city in flyers, demanding folk to report their neighbors. It's a bit unsettling, really. Can't say who's got the right of it, the Shez or the Roots, but it's been a long struggle. Not looking forward to seeing how it all ends. brew you up. You have a good day now. Hi again. Ready to buy a bicycle yet? You'll get around a lot. Come get your latest issue of the Shadian Post here. Did you pick up a Sure thing. Would you like to donate a glowstone to the Shadian Post so we can keep the paper free without ads and unmotivated by pop news and tap? No problem. in a book. Ah, you've returned. You will certainly live a long time if you keep drinking this magical tincture. Let me know if you need any weird-tasting ground-up plants. Yeah, I bought one. I knew it was a toxic tuber. It was pretty obvious. I already used it in a ritual, so you can't buy it back. There are a group of people who like drinking this special tea because it makes you have better dreams. They hang out in the cistern under the city, but sometimes they have meetings on the Salt Spring Coast Beach. My brother loves drinking the tea, but it's so boring. I mean, it just makes you dream. You're asleep the whole time. I think they're kind of like the Roots. They love dream teas too, but they believe only their gods should be able to drink them. Let me know if you need any weird tasting ground up plants. like you've managed to impress the great Yevany. I thought you might. Your work is excellent and just the style our clients are looking for. We've got a whole bunch of commissions just waiting around. We keep them all in a ledger at the back. Take a look and see if you're up for any of them. When you finish a commission, just bring it back to me. I'll ensure you get paid and that the client gets the artwork. We're glad to have you join the gallery. Thank you. 
I'm not supposed to give those out to patrons. There's a bit of construction going on. I love it here. There's really no part of town I'd be worried to let my two daughters play unsupervised. I moved here right out of college when my longtime resident aunt wrote to me about a job opening in the library. It was quite a great distance for me to move, considering it was a bit of a paltry opening at the time. But 20 years later, as head librarian, I can't say I have any regrets. Some blue here, green, no, yellow. I'm rooting for you, child. Living vicariously through you in your quest to retrieve my lost box. It's going to be another late night, that's for sure. How's the hot spring sample collecting going? Like I said, help me with discovering the truth about Melek's elixir, and I'll be sure they're a group that highly appreciates the consumption of dream teas. The teas are made with herbs that stimulate dreams. It's quite interesting how the chemicals work on the brain. They are safe in moderation, the largest risk being that when sleeping with dream teas, one gets very little rest, since the brain is actually more stimulated than during the day. The latest science actually considers it a form of exercise for your brain. Sorry, you can't go up there right now. We're doing some renovations. Have a good one. Welcome back. We've got plenty more patrons interested in your work. Plenty more patrons interested in your work. Ugh, some people. So tacky.
a wonderful show at the Tarnish Depot last night. The Tea House hosts a different musician or storyteller every evening. Oh, they are such inspiring events. Goodness, I almost fed this to my grandmother. Thanks for finding me. Here, you take it back. I don't need it anymore. Oh, have you been there yet? I highly recommend it. Just relax, sip some tea, and have a lovely nap. A perfect way to spend an afternoon. I don't know much about the group, other than that it's some sort of spiritual gathering. But they do love dream tea. It's sacred to them. I think my father-in-law belongs to their group. I should ask him about it. you get them back? Oh dear. I can't believe this. All oh, my days as a vendor are over. I just know it. Thank you for going out there. You can keep these tubers. Just don't eat them. Life is good here in Nava. again. Ready to buy a bicycle yet? You'll get around a lot faster. It's all yours. Hop on.
Welcome to the inn. It's kind of like a club. People go under the city to drink dream teas, relax, unwind. It used to be open for everyone, but it's pretty locked down now. Some folks have been trying to destroy or steal their tea plants, so they had to get real protective. There was a dream party out on the Salt Spring coast a few nights ago. Who knows? Maybe you can make the right connections and get a chance to try some.
We've got the best herbs and potions in all of Eastshade. <laughs> Tell your family, your friends, and uh, random acquaintances to come here for all their apothecary needs. We've got the best herbs and potions in all of Eastshade. To <laughs> Tell your family, your friends, and for for random really acquaintances to come here for all their apothecary needs. It's been so long since we've had a single customer. Welcome to K&K &K Apothecary, the finest source for all your medicinal tincture needs. If you hear of anyone looking for an apothecary, send them our way. Oh, really, just send anyone our way. It's been so long since we've had a single customer. Beautiful place to come and think, wouldn't you say? This place will always be closest to my heart. My husband liked to come out here and fish. We spent many nights camping here in the Blushwood. But now old Pops is doing his best to tarnish my fond memories. Grandfather, goodness no, Traveler. Old Pops is a fish, the biggest fish in the lake. Ha! What didn't he do? This fish has haunted my dreams for, oh, what seems like ages. Old Pops, that evil fish. He has it out for me, I'll have you know. I was out on the boat with my husband, Farid, an anniversary camping trip, when old Pops leaps out of the water and snatches my wedding ring right off of my finger. It's not the first time he's pulled something like this. He's taking glowstones and bracelets. Uh, sneakiest thief on the islands, that fish is. Can't right say for sure. Just a grumpy old fish he is. People round here talk about old Pops like he's some sort of magical fish with healing properties or some nonsense. 
They say when you stare old Pop straight in the eye, he conjures an image of what you want most in this world and makes that thing seem real to you, as real as day. Say, what would old Pops make you think of? What do you treasure most? Adventure? Painting? That's admirable, traveler. Most important thing in the world. <sighs> My Farid, what would I do without him? That's enough reflecting for the time being. You and I, people of action. I don't suppose you'd be willing to help me get my wedding ring back. Of course, of course. He's a big old fish, but you're strong. Will you get that ring for me? Excellent, excellent. Old pups, better watch out. Our new traveler friend is a-coming for you. You got a fishing pole? You're not gonna be catching old Pops without one. Maybe not even with one, that floundering foe. No doubting you could find one in Nava if you've got some glowstones to spare. Uh, don't know too much about him, other than he's a big one. Betting he's a sandfish by the size of him. You stay careful round old Pops, you hear? He has it out for us. Especially boaters and fisher folk.
friend. Glorious day, wouldn't you say? What an incredible day to be alive. Ah, oh, I see you're a traveller, swept in from some distant land. How enchanting. Ah, oh, marvellous place, East Shade. The only trouble is, traveller, the little mice. The little mice. You see, they've taken a liking to my garden. Not sure how they eat so much when I'm not looking. Must be bigger than I think. I'm standing guard, but it's not working. Somehow they're getting past me. Must be while I'm sleeping. Not that I mind, really. I'm glad they have a proper meal. But how I dream of cooking up a proper stew. Vegetable, of course. Can't have a good stew without an assortment of the finest crops, eh? Tell you what, bring me seven sticks so I can finish my fence. That just may do the trick against these crafty carrot eaters. Of course, I never let a friend journey on without a few glowstones to pad their pocket. How's ten sound? Oh, isn't that perfect? I knew it was a good thing we met, Traveller. Of course, I appreciate your help. Nothing wrong with running around picking up sticks, just don't forget to get lost once in a while, eh? And look around you, smell the roses! Oh, listen to me, I sound like an old-timer! Refreshing to hear someone say it, other than myself. I'm sure the polite nature of East Shade folk has a reputation far and wide. No chance someone would wrong another. Anyhow, thanks for getting these sticks for me. It's a full-time job, standing guard. Why don't you come back in a day's time? That'll give me time to patch up this fence and see how it does against the little mice. See you soon. Maybe a mead. Here you are, then. Nothing like a refreshing cup. I don't think I've seen your face before. Are you from out west? Ah, okay. I thought you might be from out west. I haven't met many westerners. I was born and raised in Nava. I really wish more Westerners would come through this way. I really want to ask them about the drumming. Have you heard the drums at night? I was just a child the first time I heard the drumming out in the blush woods. My best friend and I used to play out here a lot. We even found a drum once. Wish I could look at that thing, but it seems to have disappeared. Ever since I moved out here, I've only heard the drumming late in the night. Some nights I hear it, others I don't. Doesn't seem to be any pattern. I like the music. It's captivating. In fact, it's almost... bewitching. But I've always been bewildered as to its source. I figure it must be some westernly folk thing. Maybe the farmers from the Teethmoor Bluffs throw parties in the Blushwood? Nobody in Nava seems to know anything about it. That's where I grew up. My best friend and I spent a lot of time out here, though, running through the blush woods. There was an old shack right in this very spot that we used as our hideout. Wasn't much more than a pile of boards back then, but I purchased the land and fixed it up. My son Finn brought his family out here, too. He always loved trees more than the bricks of the city. And I've got five beautiful grandchildren. Things couldn't be better.
I have some news for you. Leilani and I went out for a picnic date at the hot springs. We went at sunset and it was gorgeous. Right when the stars came out, I told her how I felt and she felt the same way. We're officially a couple now. Thank you so much for helping me out. It means the world to me. You're such a great friend, a champion of true love. Brave traveler, I can see you have an adventurous spirit. I've got an excursion you're sure to love. Right, oh, sharp as a knife you are. This here is the bursting bubble. It has the ability to take passengers all the way up to the mountain top. The ride is sure to give you a burst of adrenaline. Think so? I wish more people had your spirit! Last person here said they'd never ride it with a name that sounded so dangerous. Oh, what if I call it the Sky Drop? Neverland? Curiosity lift. Moon shadow. Yeah, that's a perfect name. Much better. Thanks, friend. You know, when I invented this thing, I really thought it was going to revolutionize transportation. Imagine just flying right up to the tip top of the world. Seems like something everyone would want to do. But for some reason, folks just don't seem to understand the idea. They can't seem to picture a balloon carrying people in the sky. I've hardly been able to get anyone out here to see it in person. Anyhow, thanks for helping with the name, Traveler. Seems to me that you're full of good ideas. Take a look at that! You've gone and painted my invention. Say, maybe this is just what people need to see to get them out here and interested in taking a flight. 
I've got it. How about you paint me and the balloon up in the air so people can get a real idea of how the flight will be? Great. I'll get ready for liftoff. I knew it would look amazing in flight. You're pretty quick with that painting business. Here, let me add some information on there. This will work. All right, that'll get people interested. Now, it's up to you to make sure the kind folks of East Shade see that flyer. Put it up somewhere with lots of traffic. Oh, I'm sure you'll find the perfect spot, Traveler. Say, Traveler, you haven't put up that flyer yet, have you? I haven't had a single person interested in the balloon. Welcome back! We've got plenty more patrons interested in your work. Beautiful! Thank you. 
found. Come here, tale of trickery and wit. There was once a witch who lived in a tiny hut at the edge of a swamp. She was skilled in the healing arts and could cure nearly any ailment. Though she had many visitors, her truest companions were a cluster of spiders living under her table. One day, a man ambled up the path and knocked upon her door. You must be the wise witch Flera, curer of all ills. He looked around the hut with a sneer. People cross the world for your cures, and yet you live in this terrible shack. Surely folks pay dearly for the chance to continue breathing. But Flara was not one for glowstones, and she quite liked her home. She only stiffened and asked what his ailment was. So he told her of the terrible pains and aches he suffered. Horrible scratching in his toenails, in each strand of hair, and in his tear ducts. Ah, it was a torture like none other. But he'd heard of the cure, only to be found in the swamp near her home. The only way to ease his pain? The heart root. Well, in all her years of saving lives, Flora had never heard of such a root. But the bog wasn't so treacherous, and she had gone in many times for lesser cures. So, she agreed to find the heart root, and the man agreed to wait in her hut. Flara trudged through the swamp, thick with slime, and the stinking air heavy with rot. When she came to a clearing of black clay, she thrust her hands into the wet muck. But alas, nothing. She dug for hours, her back aching and fingernails packed with mud. Finally, just as twilight fell to darkness, she found it. A spiral green tuba, pulsing and glowing like a star. She lifted the root, heavy with swamp water, and slid it into her bag. Not a moment later, something rustled in the shadows. A tiny silhouette showed itself beside her. You have stolen from me. That root is not yours to take. It hissed. The witch could just make out the sight of a moss elf, staring up at her in fury. She told him of the ailing man and the power of the strange root. But the moss elf only grew more angry and stamped his feet in the swampy muck. The root of poison and destruction! He screeched. It cannot heal anything! I curse you! I curse you to remain in this bog forever! And he snatched the root from her bag before darting back into the night. Flora's path melted away, replaced by a ring of identical tree trunks, branches crisscrossing, weaving a cage around her. Roots churned under her feet, and a bone-chilling mist draped itself over the bog. Flara sat down on a tree trunk and got to thinking, wondering about the man who had sent her in hunt of the root. Had he known the truth? Had he wanted to use it for evil? No way to tell. So she set to trying to remember if anyone had ever broken a Marcel curse. Just then, she felt a tickling down her arm and her leg. She fought the urge to swipe, and if it wasn't her own spiders, they brought terrible news. The supposedly ailing man had taken over Flara's hut, demanding riches and luxuries from the ill in exchange for false medicines. He'd thrown out her furniture and dumped the spiders into the rain, threatening to stomp them if they snuck back in. Now, it is often forgotten that spiders know an awful lot about a lot of things. With so many eyes and a knack for spinning tails, it's a natural skill. They knew exactly how to break a moss elf curse and set to spinning huge lacy webs, making a cocoon of the forest. They hummed softly, and when Flara cut through the silk, she was at the edge of the bog, her hut just up ahead. Laborers surrounded her home, painting and scraping, her precious herbs crushed beneath their feet. 
She peered through the window, and there was the man sitting upon a throne, and beside him a large pile of jewels and glowstones. Flara burst through the door, and he jumped halfway to the sun. You've taken too much! There are hundreds of jewels before me, and not a one do you deserve! You haven't enough hands to even carry these riches, you snake! Now the spiders thought this was quite a funny idea, so they hummed again, and the man sprouted hundreds of hands, and his body grew long and snake-like. He shrunk smaller and smaller before slinking under the door and out into the bog. And so, you've now heard the tale of how centipedes came to be. Thank you.